Good morning. <laughs> it's good to see you today. Because as always, we have gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive and he lives. He's alive and he lives. We have hope. I have hope. I hope you have hope. I hope you've been enjoying these last couple of weeks of 2023. It's been a, a rough year for, for a lot of people, for a lot of people. But I hope for you, it has been a year filled with blessings. I know for us here at our Father's House of Prayer, it's it's been a mixed bag of blessings. <laughs> you know, if I was living by sight, I would say we, we are struggling and we have a lot of problems and a lot of things not going our way. But if I acknowledge the, the things of faith or I live by faith, then things are going well, right? I mean, I could be inside of a country that is in the midst of a war, a war-torn country. I could be living inside of a country where Christian persecution is at its highest of levels, where people are being killed, murdered, destroyed, burned alive, things of this nature. I could be in prison, I, I could be sick, and, and we've dealt with a lot of different things throughout this year, and my father getting sick, and, and but with that, he's every day getting stronger, getting better, and we still pray for 10 more years, you know, uh, to be able to enjoy him here in this world. We, everybody fears death. It's a fearful thing and, and it's, we don't even want to think about it. And nobody wants to accept the death of a loved one no matter who that loved one may be. And, and uh, the younger we are, when we experience death, if we, or the loss of someone, the harder it is to accept. And we can find ourselves questioning everything, questioning God, why, what's going on, how, where is the love of God? Especially when, when things aren't going well in life, we, we question God. I know for myself, lately my, my prayers are and have been for God to protect over me, and not only me, but over my family and this house of prayer. It, my prayer to God right now is... If I could do this any more wrong, then I'm already doing it. What, what would that look like? And if I'm doing it wrong, explain to me how it's wrong. Why is it wrong? And if I could do it right, or I could right the ship, or do it a better way, or a different way, a way more pleasing to you, how could I do that? So I'm sitting back, you know, waiting for her. God's response. 
her father's response, you know, I, I truly want to know if, if I could mess it up any more than I've already messed it up, well, what would I have to do to do that? And I don't know. Because in, in, in all of life, uh, with all the problems and the struggles that, that we're faced with as human beings in life, you know, I, I can't change anybody or anything. I, I can change myself and I could do things differently for myself and I, I, I guess that's sometimes the thing that we all fear the most is ourselves and, and our the problems we we place ourselves under. You know would be nice if we could change the spirituality of a nation, the spirituality of a community. If we could change the behavior of this group of people or that group of people, but the cold hard reality is, you know, I have the capacity and the ability to change myself. And we gotta take sometimes a deep look into who we are and what we are and what we're doing and, and how are we doing it, you know. I've had thoughts of just discontinuing the Sunday sermon live streams. We, we do live streams there on Facebook for Sunday services and uh, been sending out, knocking on doors through Facebook, trying to get into the faces or <laughs> to get into the world or into the lives of the people who live here in this community, in the community I'm a part of and in. And it seems to be difficult, and it's strange to me because when I and I have a, a, a online group, our Father's House of Prayer, there on Facebook, and you know I, I send out the friend request, and then I invite people into the group, and it's weird because if I share a post just some common post, like a, a good word, or uh, let's make today good. Let's make today a, a great day, you know, uh, something like that, or a, a post with a picture on it, and people see that, and, and, and you know, 17 people, 21 people seen this post. And then when you share the live stream, zero people see it. I make these videos and these recordings and share it and four people see it. So it makes me wonder why, what's going on. How, how do 21 people see a, a post that has absolutely no value or meaning see it, and, and then when I pour my heart out into these Bible teachings and videos of me expressing my faith and love for Jesus Christ, they, they go absolutely unseen. How is that so? And it makes me wonder should I even waste my time in continuing and in, in doing it? And what am I doing? And what am I doing wrong? And or are are is the powers at be the demonic atheist world and this 
the satanic worship of the owners of Facebook blocking the videos or, or not allowing the videos to be sent out or are they, is there something going on in, in, in that aspect or or place in, in life, you, you know, what, what, where is the roadblock and what's creating the roadblock? And I don't know, I don't, I don't have the answers to those questions. If you desire for me to continue making and producing the Sunday morning live streams there on Facebook, let me know. Let me know. Ask me, and I will. Let me know if it's having an, an impact in your life. Is there, have you gained anything by following me, my teachings, or any of the stuff I, I've put out there online? Pretty much 100% of my ministry has has been online over the past 11 years. And uh, I, I, and I chose to go that route because I felt like I, I could reach a, a people who don't go to church. And I felt like that was my calling to, to, to separate from the 99, to separate from the gathering of believers, to, to go out and find those who are lost and are lost and who have been separated from the gathering of believers. There, there's been such a falling away from the church and, and trust in the church and those who, who preach in the church. And even I, for a time, you know, found myself walking down that path of, you know, what, what do we need the church for? What, what's, what good can be gathered from a church? And but I, I've slowly come to see and to recognize that God is in the midst of those who gather in his name. If, if we find Jesus Christ in the midst of those two or more, even if it was two to three that have gathered in his name and, and there he is in the midst of them, then surely Jesus and God is, is in the midst of a whole group of believers. And, you know, they're, they're, you would think you, you, there'd be some sort of power in it. And, I, you know, I don't know. And I don't know what power I'm seeking for. And, and, and maybe the, the, the power I so desire to have in my life is the power generated from love, from love, you know. Uh, I, I, I truly believe and, and hope and, and try to preach the gospel of love and, and trying to get people to recognize and to understand that there is no greater power on earth in the heart of humanity than that of, of love. You know, I had somebody complaining about some of the things I was teaching. Oh, you, you, you preach uh, saved by works. And, and I certainly do not preach saved by works. I preach saved by faith and faith in God's grace, faith in Jesus Christ. Now, with that being said, there is no law against doing good works. And there's no law against loving one another. There's no laws against doing what is right. In fact, the Bible says that 
we are always being prepared and built up and, and made ready to do the work of God. And the work of God is good. We are co-workers with God. See, there's so many people who, who, who refuse to read the whole Bible. They want to read their favorite verses of the Bible instead of the whole Bible. You know, even Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Jesus Christ. You know, like Paul says, the guy who, who said, you know, we are saved by grace and faith in grace alone, said, stop sinning. Since, you know, if you make, sell yourself to, to the prostitute, then you're, you're joining together with a prostitute, and do we make Christ a prostitute, or we do we join together with Christ in the body of Christ for the sake of all? See, a lot of people in this world right now, they want to be free from the penalties of sin. They want to be free from the penalties of sin. But none of them really want to be free from sin. Now in Ezekiel chapter 36, God says, the Lord our God says, uh, because you desire one thing, to be free from the penalty of sin and not that of sin, God acts and he's going to do something. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just about the forgiveness of sin, but the transformation of our life. John the Baptist preached a message of repentance that through the baptism of the water we, we, we could have access to the forgiveness of sin. And, and all the people who went to John the Baptist confessed their sins. John says, hey, he believe in the one who comes after me because he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit cleanses us of sin. Of sin, not the penalties of sin, but cleanses us from sin, washes the sin away. In the book of Ezekiel says, uh, uh, there will be a transformation, chapter 36, of your heart. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to give you a new spirit, my spirit. And that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and once that happens, you will be careful to follow my commandments and my rules. In fact, Jesus says, he who loves me obeys the commandments, my commandments. They, they follow my rules, and, and they do that out of love and admiration for him. He says, the one who hates me will not obey the commandments, and they won't obey the commandments because of their hatred toward Jesus, you know. In the epistles of John, John says if we, we are still walking in darkness if we have no love for our brothers. In fact, if we withhold, if we have access to, to monetary things and stuff and possessions and, and we see our brother standing there in, in need and we don't respond to their needs not with prayer, but, but actually respond to their needs by helping them out. We, we, we're still walking in darkness. We're a liar when we say we know God. So in all the Bible, in all of Paul's writings and everything, as, as, he, as he explains it, you know, who are you joining yourself to? And if you join yourself to sin... Seeking only, only that the, you know, penalties of sin be erased from you so that you can continue in sin. 
without guilt or, or shame, you, you're completely off the path. You're, you're missing the point. And uh, you, you, you should desire to stop sinning. Even Paul says we must put off the works of darkness and, and grab hold of the light. And Christ being the light, Christ even says, you know, let your light shine amongst men so that they may see your good deeds and there praise God our Father. It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. And, and there was a long time in my life when I was a young Christian growing up that, you know, I, 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 I struggled with that and tried to, to convince myself that it wasn't about what I do. It's only about what I say. And, and over time, God and, and Jesus, I think, made it very clear to me that it, it's about what you do, and not what you say. We, we, we live our creed. We live our faith. We do what is right. I, and, I, and I think Jesus displays that desire for us. When, when he feeds the, the 4,000 there in, in the book of Mark and the 5,000, you know, in, in the book of Matthew or and you know, with the few loaves and, and the few fish. He, he, he gives the disciples the loaves. You feed them. I desire to feed them. And, and so he, he has the disciples feed them. Because we're co-workers with God. And... and in that work of God, we are displaying his compassion and his love and, and his grace. So when I say I live by faith in Jesus Christ, I, I believe in everything Christ was, and, and I believe that Christ and everything he did was good. And so my desire is to, all the time, every day, and everything I do, to be more like him. Just to be more like him and to participate in the things he declared as good. And that's my desire. My desire is that this house of prayer would be a house of refuge, a place where people could come and say, hey, I found a safe place to be, that it was safe there. It was safe when they came in here. And, and I don't know, people, seems like when, when you actually live your faith and you believe it, and, and that that makes people afraid because most people don't live their faith. Most people don't actually believe it. I think they want to believe it. I think they try to believe in it. But there, there's a roadblock in there. There's something in there that's preventing them from living it. People want to convince you that if you say it, it's a lifestyle, oh, you're, you're off the path, you're, you're living a, a works-based salvation, and I'm, no. 
No, it's... That's, I think, them seeking to justify their either inability or, or desire to participate in, in the things that are good. I don't know. I don't get it and I, and I don't understand it. You know. We'll see. Still got to get the leaky roof fixed. Still got a few things to do here, but I want to get the fence finalized and, and the chicken run so we can get our chickens and our ducks out in, in our animal area <laughs> out in the back and we'll get that there come spring. Right now we got snow all over the place, ice all over the place. You know, uh, it's very disappointing to me. You go around to every church in, in town and, and the city does semi-decent job of cleaning the roads and then when you come to our church you know they they pile big gross piles of snow right in the, the very front of access to our church where the elderlies and, and the wheelchair ramp is in the wheelchair ramp they provide out in these small communities is uh, it's a joke it's not even accessible for anybody, especially if you were in a crippled situation. But still, the, the disrespect of it all, and the disrespect we have to put up with constantly. It's been a challenge to deal with, but, you know, it's doable. We're able to continue on, we're able to smile, we're able to laugh and, and giggle, and uh, we're continually moving forward and very slow, very slow, but we're, we're doing it. And, uh, you know, I don't want to deceive you into believing that just because I have turned my life to Jesus Christ, just because my family and all of us have invested pretty much everything into this church, that, you know, God just opened up the gates of heaven and right down from, from the heavenlies, gold began. <laughs> floating down and raining gold right into our pockets and, and, and all the problems of the world just ceased and went away. And that, that's an absolute deception and a lie. And I didn't come here to lie or deceive you. I, I come here to say that Christ has given us the strength to deal with each and every problem we've had to deal with. He's given us the, the faith to be able to continue going and continue moving forward, absent of human support and human acceptance. And I think that's available to you as well, the, the, the faith and the ability to continue on even when the world and everything in it says, stop doing that. <laughs> You're wasting your time in doing that. You, 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 you. What are you going off and doing that for? You know, trying to, to shame you and make you look bad for. But somehow, somewhere, our, our faith in God 
continues to strengthen us and give us the ability to endure the disappointments, to endure the hardships. And, and that's something I hope I'm, I'm able to teach you that, you know, we're not without hope. Our hope is still fully alive and God continues to put within me that this desire to always please him. And if I'm not pleasing you, Lord, what do I need to do to be pleasing to you? Because that's my desire, to, to please and to be pleasing to God. And maybe the, the, the one thing I could do to please God is to continue praising Him, to continue preaching about Him, to continue talking about my faith to a world that is lost to the people who are lost. A people who are, are, have lost their connection to love, and honor, and respect, and, and things of that nature, you know. I don't know. I sat down and just randomly opened the Bible to some random page and it opened right to uh, Second Kings chapter 4 and, and again my, my prayer over the past few days has been what am I doing wrong and if I could do it more wrong than I'm doing it now what would I have to do to do that? And if I wanted to do it differently, if there was something I should do to do it differently to make it more successful, what what would I have to do to do that? Because sometimes I wonder, am I, am I messing it up? Am I doing it wrong? And so I seek for answers. Chapter 4 of 2 Kings says this. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What have you in what have you in the house? She said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty the vessels, and not too few. Then Go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door and behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought out the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God and said, and he said, go and sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons can live on the rest. It's kind of interesting. She had one jar and it was a jar filled with oil and he said, well, 
take that jar of oil, go get to, from your friends and your neighbors a whole bunch of jars. And, and as Jesus says, the things you, you do in secret, go and shut the door and make this, do this in secret. P put forth your faith in what? The teachings and instructions of the men of God. Put your faith into the teachings and the instructions of the men of God. And do this in the secret places of the, of the heart, <laughs> in the secret places of, of your home. It's not about impressing your neighbors or, or doing something, trying to... Uh, gain favor or social status from your neighbors. I just seek relief from, from the stress of injustice, injustice. Jesus says the same, going to your room into your closet and it's the things you do that are done in secret that that God is paying attention to you know I was in that place in my life where you'd come to a church gathering or wherever it was and somebody is in need of prayer or asks for prayers and somebody steps up and I got a prayer for you, I'll pray for you and they put their hands on the person and, and belt out this great and wonderful prayer and then you're like, wow, that, that, that seemed so powerful. That sounded so beautiful, and everybody around, and, oh, what a beautiful prayer, and oh, and, and they uh, showed the man honor and, and respect. Oh, I wish I had that honor. I wish I had that respect, and, and you know, I wish people looked to me in, in the same way they looked to that man when they needed prayers and they needed help or whatever it was. And boy, he must really feel good when, when all the people come and say, oh, what, what a great job you did. You, you spoke that prayer with such authority. He must be a really faithful guy. And then I remember in, in the hospital, here this past week with my dad and him being sick and, and thinking, you know, should I stand up and say this great and wonderful prayer? Should I lay my hands on my dad and, and say the, the, this great and wonderful prayer? Should, should I say, you know, Jesus Christ, with, with all the power of your love, heal my father right this moment and, and you know, command the Lord to, to do some mighty miracle and, and then, you know, it's like I just want the prayer answered. And, and Father, I'm asking you right from the depths of my heart and, and silent prayer in, in my mind and in my spirit, believing that God is in me, God is with me, God hears all even the unspoken words. And it's the things said and spoken in secret that God's paying attention to. And, and Father, I, I just want my dad to be healed. I, we want to get out of this place. And, I, and I'm not looking for pats on the back and, and people's acceptance. And I just want you to to acknowledge my love for my dad by responding 
to his well-being. I don't know. So even here in, in the story, they're saying it's about what you do, not what you say. And and by faith, you know, is she displaying faith? She's de she's definitely displaying faith. Her faith can be seen because she obeyed the instructions of Elijah. Now, now, what about Jesus when, when he says to his disciples, boy, these people have been with me these three days, <laughs> been with me three days and three nights out in the middle of nowhere, and, and I want to show them compassion. What do, what do we have to feed them? Nothing. We've got a uh, few loaves of bread, and in the book of Mark, you know, I mean, this is two times they did this miracle, and it's 4,000 people here. We got seven loaves of bread and a few fish. There's no way we can feed all these people. And Jesus doesn't focus on what they don't have. Instead, he focuses on what they do have, and he multiplies that. Same with here. He's... Elijah's not focused on what she doesn't have. What do you got? I got a jar of oil, so, so we're going to multiply what you have. And, and maybe that's what God is doing in my life. He, he's multiplying faith. And what do you got, Dave? I got faith in your command. I got faith in your instructions. And, and the command and the instructions Jesus gave to me was, was go out and tell the world how much I love them. Go out and tell the world I have heard their prayers, and yes, I'm coming soon. Go tell the world I am coming. And because I believe in that, I believe not only that he is coming, that he will come, and he will manifest itself. He will deliver us from the hands of evil. He will destroy evil. And so I, I respond with faith. Never once ever in my life ever believed me and my family would, would be the, the owners and sole caretakers of a beautiful, wonderful, 120-year-old church. <laughs> I never believed or, or recognized or understood that God would ever entrust me with something like that. And yet, he, he entrusted me with, with so much more than that. When I go back and, and I look at it, He trusted in my faith. And now that I think about it, I can't even please you, God, unless I have faith. Because we, we must come to God with faith and believe he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I, I've been out diligently seeking love. Those, the people whom God so chooses to save and, and to deliver and to help. People like yourself. He believed in my faith. So my faith is always multiplying. It's always growing. <laughs> and no matter what the situation is, no matter how dire the situation feels, no matter how bleak things seem to be, 
my faith is still as strong today as it's ever been. I still believe he's coming. I still believe he loves you. And I most certainly believe if you cried out to the Lord, he would hear your prayer. This is an interesting story. If we go to chapter 4, and I don't want to bypass the story of the Shunammite woman, but Elijah purifies the deadly stew. <laughs> chapter 4, verse 38, And Elijah came to Gilgal, or Gilgal, where there was a famine in the land. And as the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, he said to his servant, Set on a large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found wild vine and gathered it and from it his lap full of wild gourds. He came and cut them into the pot of stew, and not knowing what they were. And they poured out some of the meat to some, poured out some for the men to eat. But while they were eating of the stew, they cried out, Oh man of God, there is death in this pot. And they could not eat it. And he said, Then bring flour, and, and they threw it into the pot and said, pour out some for the men that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. And pour out some flour, and you know, I wonder if the flour was a little bit of manna from heaven. A little bit of, of love and, and grace from God. This was food for, for the prophet's sons. And again, they were listening and obeying the instructions of Elijah. And, and even at, to the point where, hey, the, the, the following your teachings, following your instructions has led us down a path where we're, we're, we can't eat this stuff. It's not good for us. It's harming us. It's making us sick. There's death in the pot. So he flew, threw in some flour. And, and, you know, if we're following the teachings and the instructions of God, even when, when we can't see the outcome and we're not sure what direction we're going and we're not sure what what's happening in our lives and, and all the disappointments in our lives. God has never placed us on a path for destruction. He doesn't seek to harm us, but to prosper us. A man came from Biel Shalayashah, bringing the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And Elijah said, give to the men that they may eat. But his servant said, how can I sit before a hundred men? So he repeated, give to them to the men, give them to the men, give the food to the men. 
that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. And, and that was a prophecy spoken, and there Jesus fulfills the prophecy because he said, you know, this is what the Lord said. They, they will eat and have some left. And, and that's where, when Jesus was feeding the 4,000, those, those were the sons of the prophets. The sons, the daughters, the children of the prophets. And the Lord was feeding them. And there was some left over. They all ate and were satisfied in fact, there were seven baskets left over. In another story, there was 12 baskets left over. Because God multiplied to them what he had. And what did he have? He had their attention. He had their faithfulness. They came diligently seeking him. And he's a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. So he said it before them in the eight and had some left according to the word of the Lord. And then you got Nahum's story. And what is Nahum's story, and all of them, and all the people of the Bible, what is their story? They heard the teachings and instructions of the Lord and then obeyed them. And in obeying the instructions of the Lord, that's where they found the blessings. That's where they found the goodness of God. So, so, so we see uh, faith absent of work is dead. But faith with works is what makes us alive. It's what makes us well. That's where we find the blessings. Faith with the obedience to the instructions, to the teachings. And where do you find the teachings and the instructions? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. 